Look at Smoking Joe, record of 32 and 3, 27 KOs. George Foreman, 42 and 1, his only loss in Zaire to Muhammad Ali. Even though he and Ali fought so well in that fight in Manila, for Joe, it was just a very difficult fight. Ended up in the hospital after that, and you question his conditioning and how sharp he can be for this one. For George Foreman, well, it's a different sort of battle. It was that big battle with Ron Lyle a few months ago, when both of them were knocked down several times during the course of that fight, the big slugfest, and you wonder just how long these fighters can go when they get involved in big wars like that. Maybe you don't measure the age of fighters chronologically like you do in uh, the boxing rings. It depends on how many tough fights. Look at Joe taking the shots again. He's using a little bit of that rope and open out. You wouldn't expect him to look as good as the 27-year-old in the prime of his life in George Foreman. Both guys are still dangerous because both guys can still bang. We're just in round one. Joe Frazier not landing much here. About a minute to go here for the first round for the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island, New York. He's giving away about seven inches in reach to Foreman, and it's tough for Joe to get through. I mean, Joe's a great boxer. It's the Bell Ends round number one. From the looks of him right now, I doubt if he ever can be. George, on the other hand, looks like he's recovered totally from his brutal war with Ron Lyle and his difficult loss to Muhammad Ali. George looks fairly sharp. He's left hook by Joe. So just as uncomfortably discussing George Foreman, Joe Frazier lands a left hook. The problem is Joe Frazier's left hook on the body, the huge body of George Foreman, doesn't take the same tone as it does on other fighters. Here's what Joe needs to do, all of his trunk movement. But he used to be able to do that, but he's saw the next. He gets through with the left hook, and look at it. George doesn't seem to take any toll of it at all. Of course, George has his problems in late rounds and fights. George does well, usually, and is able to knock guys down with just brute strength in the first two, three, four rounds. And you get into the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth round with George, and you got a shot. They love their boxing here in the state of New York. What a fine job the New York State Athletic Commission does. About a minute left in round number four. This don't forget is scheduled for 12. Many people don't think it's going to go the distance because of the size of these fighters and the way both of these guys can hit. Joe with a desperation wild left hand that time. And the clubbing George Foreman continues to build up points as he whacks away at the head, the trunk, and the body of the former great champion Joe Frazier. Joe's already done better in this fight getting into the fourth round than he did in Kingston. A lot of people question whether George Foreman's conditioning is great, but the fact of the matter is he's coming off a very difficult fight too against that Ron Lyle. And both of those guys, I think there were eight knockdowns in the first uh, few rounds of that fight and finally Foreman knocked out Ron Lyle, the Denver fellow that is mighty strong and mighty big. Look at these shots. Every time Joe gets one through in the closing seconds of round four, they love him here in Long Island, New York. Joe Frazier, George Foreman. George Foreman, we questioned his conditioning coming into the fight because he took so many shots and vicious shots from Ron Lyle in his last fight. So far, it's all George Foreman, and it apparently is continuing that way here in the fifth round. Look at these body shots. If the fourth round was more or less even, George definitely won the first three. But here in the fifth round, George is taking command again. Cut lands, right hand lands behind the air of uh, Frazier. Frazier tries to fight back. He's got such a big heart. And look at these big clubbing punches. And that's all you can call him. It's like big clubbing punches. That one he really got into. Again, Gil Clancy doesn't want him pushing his left hand. He wants him snapping it. He started doing that. And now he's throwing more right hands. I think uh, George Bumble wants to end this thing as soon as he can. Because he's looking a little bit fatigued. And he's throwing so many punches and big wide punches that he can get on where he, if the fight goes uh, in the 6th, 7th, 8th round.